So this question is set up like a simplify question. So remember, simplify questions typically have an equation or expression. In this case, we have two equations. And then also the other telltale sign is that the question is typically very short, right? Between one and three lines long. So what do we do with simplify questions? First of all, let's read the question and then it'll actually help us to know exactly how to approach the information provided. So the question says, if the ordered pair x, y satisfies the system of equations above. Now, what does that mean? That means that there's some x value and y value that when we plug them in to where the y and x values are in both of these equations, they will both basically um, work out. They'll be equal to each other. So what is one possible value of x, right? So we're not looking for both x and y. We just want x. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I think the best thing to do given the scenario here. Because on this test, you're not going to ever be given a single variable that represents two different quantities. So what does that mean? If y, the variable y is used here, and the variable y is used there, those y values must be the exact same, right? So if I know that I'm looking for x, I can substitute 4 minus x for this y here, right? Because I know that y is equal to 4 minus x. So I'm going to just rewrite all of this more clearly. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. But again, I know that y is also equal to 4 minus x, which means I can replace this y and say, well, that means that 4 minus x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4, right? This is just substitution. And is substitution, um, we could have done substitution in another way, but we know the question is asking us for x, right? So this is a way to get rid of y completely. So now we have to simplify. We have some like terms. I have this negative x here. So I'm going to, again, just to give myself some more space, I'm going to write this down again. 4 minus x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. I am going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I am going to add x to both sides. Therefore, the left-hand side here is now 0 is equal to x squared, a negative 4x plus x is negative 3x, and positive 4 minus 4 is nothing, right? So I have, and I'll just rewrite it this way because it's more common to see it this way, x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. Now, how do I simplify that? Well, it's not a trinomial, it's a binomial. So um, what I can do is say, well, anytime I want to factor, I need to first of all find a greatest common factor. In this case, it's x. So I'm going to pull out an x or factor out an x and say, well, this x squared minus 3x is really or can be rewritten as x parentheses x minus 3. So hopefully you see how those things are equivalent. And once I've factored it in that way, I'd say, well, hey, how do I get x times x minus 3 to equal 0? Well, either x is equal to 0, right? Because if, if this is equal to 0, then 0 times all of this is going to also be 0. So that's one option. The other option is that x minus 3 is equal to 0, right? Because then it doesn't matter what x is here, but if x minus 3, right, if this quantity altogether is equal to 0, then once you multiply it by x, we get the, the, the answer here that it's all equal to 0. So that's how we answer this question. So x equals 0 is an option. So that's one possibility. So that should be something that is considered to be correct for this answer. But then x can also be 3. Right? So x can also equal 3. So those are the two possible answers. That's why the question says, what is one possible value? Because there is more than one possible value here. So whether you choose 0 or whether you choose 3, um, either one will be correct for this question.